ESPN college football insider expert and analyst. He is a BYU national champion, Trevor Maddich, for a Maddich Tuesday on BYUSN. Trevor, first and foremost, Happy New Year. Hope you had a fantastic holiday season. It was a wonderful holiday season, and uh, New Year was perfect. I was doing uh, radio pregame, postgame, and halftime for the both playoff games, and so I didn't get to go out, but I got to stay in and watch two of the most spectacular college football games in recent memory. Incredible stuff. We'll get to that in just a moment, but there are big things happening at BYU, notably at the quarterback position. Keaton Slovis leaving Pittsburgh at once a, a point in his career. He was the Pac-12 freshman of the year at USC. Now he's a BYU quarterback, Trevor. What do you think of the Keaton Slovis addition to lead the Cougars at quarterback as they go into the Big 12? It is absolutely fantastic. Of the available quarterbacks in the portal this year, he would be in the, in the tip top tier of guys that you would want to bring in if they would want to come. The thing is, he's, he's played a lot of football. And so on the field, he's seen defenses. He could read defenses. He's been in a couple of different kinds of systems. He understands how to apply progressions to different coverages. He's got the potential for tremendous accuracy. Those things are all very important. He's got a very strong arm, which is important, too, because BYU's offensive system re relies on a lot of deep passing to open things up and for deep strikes. And he's got the arm to be able to hit those, just like Jared Hall did, just like Zach Wilson did. But more than that, he's got experience. I mean, he's been through so much. It's one thing if you're a, a hotshot freshman, you come rolling in with a whole bunch of stars next to your name and you've never had any adversity. He's had success, great success, but he's also had some adversity with injury and having to work through that kind of a thing. And so I think he's got a maturity and a leadership that he'll be able to step right in and be a leader in that locker room. I think it's it's a, on every level a fantastic transfer for BYU. And I think it's great for Keith because he's got a young, dynamic group of receivers. He's got a, a really good and intriguing group of running backs. And even with transfers and possibly the NFL, he's got an experienced big group of offensive linemen in front of him. I think this is a great marriage. Let's talk about one of those running backs. You mentioned Aiden Robbins coming over after two years at Louisville and then UNLV. We'll hear from him later in the program. What do you think he can do, perhaps as running back uh, number one for BYU in the first year of the Big 12? Well, he's huge. He's about, what, 6'2", 6'3", 230 pounds. He's the kind of a guy that can just be a hammer, just an absolute bludgeon. And then you got Miles Davis to compliment him. And, and, you know, Rapati's coming back as well. So you've got a really good, diverse skill set in the running back room. And I think Robbins is the kind of a guy that could be an absolute workhorse. I mean, just to pound defenses and wear them down. And, and BYU showed in the last couple of games against Stanford in the bowl game, what can happen if they really commit to that run? And I think that with with Robbins there, I think they've got uh, just a, a fantastic addition. Uh, but he's not the only one. But the way he fits in because of his size and his power, I think give the offensive coaching staff a whole lot of options. I think it's another wonderful transfer for BYU. And I think it's great for Robbins because of that offensive line in front of him and because of the, the skill players in the passing game that can keep safeties out of the box for him. Trevor Maddich is on BYU Sports Nation, part of a Maddich Tuesday. Let's switch over to the defensive side of things. Now the BYU coaching staff is set for the defense. Obviously, Jay Hill as the coordinator was the huge acquisition. He gets Sione Puha to unretire, brings over Kelly Papinga from Boise State, has Gennaro Guilford staying around, and most recently the Cougars add Justin Enna, former Cougar linebacker great. Trevor, how much of an impact do you expect this new defensive staff to make for BYU in year one of the Big 12? Well, it should have a huge impact because of experience and what they can do. All of them, You can make a case that a lot of these guys are even overqualified. And you see the best defensive staffs around the country tend to have a lot of coaches that have experience as coordinators. And Coach Papinga, special teams coordinator. Coach Enna has got seven years of his career where he was a defensive coordinator, now position coach. And of course, Coach Hill, a former head coach, and, and the, all the rest of the stuff that he's done. So you've got coaches that know the big picture, not just what the puzzle piece that they're working on is from a standpoint of the micro view, but the macro view. And I think that's really important. You put that together, with the style that they're going to run, the attacking style. And all of a sudden, you have the kind of a defense that'll be a whole lot of fun for those defenders to run. 
And when it's fun, when you attack, you tend to attract more recruits. Recruits don't want to, defensive recruits don't want to read and react. They want to attack. They want to get the sacks, the tackles for loss, the things that makes the splash plays, you know, the things that get them NIL money because it raises their profile because of all the splash plays that they can make. This is a splash play kind of a defense, and the coaching staff that they've put together has tremendous experience to be able to make all the parts work into a cohesive whole. We walk into next season not knowing a few things. How exactly this defense will function, how exactly BYU will fare, how exactly the Big 12 will be, who even BYU plays. So what's fair at this point to expect this fall in football for BYU defensively in the Big 12, Trevor? I think defensively, it's fair to expect that they will have a much better havoc rate. Havoc plays are plays that that will create havoc. So you're talking about tackles for loss, sacks, pass breakups, interceptions. There's a there's a series of, of things that go into that. And BYU needs to create more of that. I think with Tyler Batty coming back and then with Ben Bywater up front, to go with the front seven and linebacker group that should still be very active. There should be the capacity to get behind the line and create those havoc plays. And that I think would be the foundation for BYU's success on defense to get behind the line and get teams behind the chains because they create negative plays. Trevor, we've talked about BYU just getting to a bowl game in year one of the big 12 win six games, call it good. It's always tough to make the power five transition. I just said I feel like with the addition of Keaton Slovis and Aiden Robbins and this new defensive staff, I'd probably put my win-loss total at seven and a half. Is that fair, too high, too low? What do you think? I think that would be a, a great season because remember that part of the equation is not the, the players that you're talking about and the coaching staff. It, it's the depth. And what has what BYU has struggled with really in recent years as they've piled up the number of power five teams that they've played is depth issues down the down the road in the season, late in the season, when they had a lot of guys hurt. I mean, just look at all the guys that were out in the bowl game this year. And now all of a sudden they're gonna end up playing nine, ten, you know, power five games, which is something that they've never done before. And so the depth I think will have more of a um, an impact on their season win total than any other single thing. So seven and a half, if they can get to that point, if they can get to, to, to seven, eight wins, I think that would be a phenomenal season as they continue to recruit to build power five depth. Oh, I'd take eight right now. Yeah, six or seven feels like it's in the wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. uh, and hopefully it's that high, right? Let's talk about uh, what you mentioned, the college football semifinal games. I mean, traditionally, the winning team has won by like 21. There's been a couple uh, great games, but... Those were two just epic games. So what did you think of those games? And, and uh, do you have Georgia beating TCU in the championship game like most people? Yeah, right now I'm, I'm still watching tape of the, of the games. I want to go back and watch it in more detail. But I'm definitely leaning Georgia. And the reason is the way Georgia and TCU won. Both of those victories were flawed. Georgia... Their defense at times seems like they were trying to give it away <laughs> by losing contain, by getting out of pass rush lanes and allowing Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud to break out and either make big plays with his legs, which he doesn't normally do, or to extend plays and make big plays, pass plays off the scramble, which he does a lot. And I'm not talking about guys getting blocked out of their lanes. I'm talking about a contained guy rushing up field and then deciding he wants to go inside. And so the quarterback just runs outside where he's supposed to have contained. You look at TCU, though, it's different. Georgia overcame even though that happened. TCU won by six points. But the Michigan quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, threw two pick sixes. And Michigan drove the ball inside the five-yard line on three occasions where they came out with a combined three points. And I thought the play calling down there was absolutely, I guess, the, the most gentle way you can say it is a head-scratcher. Uh, abysmal is another way to put it in terms of the, the position that the players uh, were in because of the plays that the coaches called, especially on, on first and goal inside the one yard line. There was a fumble that TCU recovered in the end zone. And it was a, a, a quick handoff to a fullback who was two yards away from the line of scrimmage, leaning so far forward that I thought he was going to fall down. He had to get up out of that stance, get ready and balanced up to take the handoff and then take the hit immediately, and he never did get the handoff because he couldn't do it that quickly. And by the way, he was a, a converted linebacker. 
why in the world are they calling that play on first and 10? So I think you look at TCU, Michigan did a whole lot to help them, although credit TCU for making the plays that were there to be made. Georgia overcame mistakes against an Ohio State team that was on fire. So I really think that uh, Georgia right now has the edge going in because TCU can't count on the Bulldogs to make the same mistakes that Michigan did. Fantastic insight from Trevor Maddich. Georgia 13-point favorite over TCU right now. Trevor, as always, uh, a pleasure to talk with you, man. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, guys.